All right, folks, so today we are gonna go through sweetening dialogue through the use of EQ, equalization, and uh, the use of a compressor. And stick around to the end, I'm gonna give you a little tip on how to keep your music volume up nice and high and, and not have it compete with your dialogue. All right, let's do this. So just kind of to start out here on the timeline, I have a piece of footage that uh, was shot a couple of years ago. Um, it was a kind of a highlight on a, on a local brewery. Uh, so the first thing that we're gonna do is apply some EQ uh, to the audio on this, on this clip. Now, I have a tendency to work uh, on audio at the rolls level. You don't have to do this, but this is, you can apply directly here. But what I do is I go to the index, let me zoom in over here, and then I go over to the roles tab and then I click and open the dialog tab. And that allows me then to work on the dialog roll down here. Let me collapse it so you'll see what I mean here. So that's the top level, that's the rolls level. Again, you don't need to do this. This is just something that I do because uh, sometimes I have complex rolls and so I like to work at the rolls level. So uh, real quick, let's just take a listen to what the audio sounds like. Frog's Dirty Blonde is uh, very similar to a blonde you would expect. So not bad to start with, but we can we can still sweeten this up, clean it up a little bit. Uh, so the first thing that we're gonna wanna make sure we do is that we have our meters up over here. If your meters are not up, all you need to do is click right here on these little meters, and that will bring the meters up. Uh, then the next thing we're gonna do is we're going to apply what's called a channel EQ. So let's open our effects palette. We're gonna go down to audio, down to the EQs, and we have this channel EQ, and we'll just drop it on to the, uh, the audio. Now, come back up to the top here, and we can, we'll see the channel EQ is applied, and I'm gonna open up the, uh, the, the controls for the channel EQ. Now let me do a quick explanation of what you are looking at here. So this is a representation of the audio. Uh, on the horizontal axis is the frequency bands, starting down here at 20 hertz, coming all the way up here to 20,000 kilohertz. So horizontally is the frequency frequency bands. Um, if we're talking about pitch, it's from low pitch to high pitch. Here on the vertical is the actual gain, so the volume of each one of these little frequencies. Um, if you turn the analyzer on and play your audio, you will actually be able to see a visual representation of where your audio exists. So let's do that. Frog's Dirty Blonde is uh, very similar. So if we look in here, we can see that his the vocal audio from him is a little above uh, 100 hertz, and for the most part up to about five kilohertz. Uh, there's a little bit up in here, but the most of it's down in here, right? from 100 hertz to 500 kilohertz. So that's where the vocal range is. So what that means is that the first thing that we're going to do is just cut all of these low frequencies that we don't need and cut all of these high frequencies that we don't need so that we can pretty much just isolate that voice to work on. So the first thing that we're gonna do on this low band is we're gonna click this cut right there. And then we're just gonna grab somewhere down in here and pull, and I'm gonna slide this over to where it starts to hit at about 100, right? If you, if you watched the last video on how to get rid of wind noise, this is kind of what that high pass slash low cut filter is doing. It's basically cutting these frequencies out, because we don't need them, they're not, they're not in the voice. And then we're gonna go to the high end, we're going to do, oh, come on. We're gonna go over here to the high end, and we're gonna do the same. We're gonna click that cut and then we're just gonna click over here and we're gonna start dragging that over until it's at about the 5K. So now we've effectively just kind of cut these high frequencies as well. Let me zoom back out so you can see. So now we've kind of isolated the voice in here. All right, so that's the first step. The next step 
and, and this gets a little, little complex, but stick with me. The next step is every single room that you record in and every microphone that you record with is going to have some bad, ugly frequencies in it. What we're gonna do next is we're gonna use this EQ to find those bad, ugly frequencies and then get rid of them, right? So all of these little dots, these little nodes, if you click on one of these and move them, you'll notice that what I'm doing here is I'm pulling up the frequencies between one K and 5K. If I come here, I'm pulling down the frequencies between 1K and 5K, right? So this is just adjusting those frequencies. And you can do it with each one of these, right? Now, when we're looking for bad frequencies, we want a very narrow frequency range to look in. So what we're gonna adjust is what's called the Q. So if I click on this and pull it over, you'll notice that it's narrowing the number of frequencies that, or the area of frequencies that we're going to adjust. We want this very, very narrow. So to do that, we're gonna go down here where you can actually type in numbers and this bottom number is the Q uh, number. So we're gonna double click there and I'm just gonna type in 100. Again here, we're gonna type in, actually I think we can just type in one and we'll be fine. So let's go here, type in one, go here, type in one. Now, as I adjust the gain on this, you'll notice that again, it's, that, it's a very narrow frequency band that I'm adjusting. All right, so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to play back, let me zoom out, I'm going to play back this audio, and while I'm playing back this audio, I'm going to use these numbers here to scrub through this frequency band. So I'm gonna pull this all the way up to a positive 24 dB, and then I'm gonna click and hold, and then I can drag left and right to kind of scrub through these frequency bands. You with me? What we're gonna do is we're gonna listen for the bad frequencies. And what it sounds like is kind of a hissing or a whistle um, in, in the audio. And when we find the points that it's the most prominent, we're gonna pull those frequencies out. I know it sounds a little weird right now, but once I start doing it, you'll get it. So the first thing that we're gonna do is we're gonna loop play this audio, right? To make sure that you're in loop play mode, look right here. You'll notice how this has a circle around it. It, that means you're in loop play. Let me turn it off real quick by hitting Command L, Command Lima. Now you can see that it's not there. That means it won't loop play. So I'm gonna hit Command L one more time to turn it on. And then we're going to highlight this piece of audio and I'm gonna hit the forward slash or question mark key. That'll start the loop playing. And then I'm gonna go start adjusting the frequency bands to find the bad ones. Here we go. Frog's Dirty Blonde is uh, very similar to a blonde you would expect. So you can kind of hear that whistle in there right now. I'm stopping during playback because I don't want the audio from my computer to also get into the microphone. Um, you can st start to hear that whistle already, um, and then I'm gonna scrub it and we'll find out where it's really strong. Here we go. Frog's Dirty Blonde is uh, very similar to a blonde you would expect. It, it just, we use a little bit of honey malt and a little bit of nutmeg that just makes it. So like right in there is where it's the strongest, that I can hear that it's the strongest. So at this point, I'm gonna pull down the gain on it um, until it sounds better. So I, usually this is gonna go all the way out, but sometimes you'll go all the way out and it'll, it won't sound quite right, so you gotta bring, you gotta back it off a little bit. So let's go ahead and pull out this frequency. Frog's Dirty Blonde is uh, very similar to a blonde you would expect. All right, so now that frequency's out. Next, we're going to move to the next uh, node. Again, we're at one on the queue. We're gonna bring this all the way up. Oh, what happened to our queue here? I guess it is 100, it's not one, it's 100. So we'll type in the 100 on all of these. I thought the one would work. 100 it is. So we're gonna bring this all the way up. And then again, we're just gonna scrub, find the bad audio or find the bad frequency and then pull it out. Here we go. Frog's Dirty Blonde is uh, very similar to a blonde you would expect. It, it just, we use a little bit of honey malt and a little bit of nutmeg that just makes it something different. It adds a little color to it. That's why we call it a dirty blonde because when people wow, see you it can, in the glass. It, you can really hear it here. 
And you hear that really bad whistling sound? Let's pull that out. Frog's Dirty Blonde is uh, very similar to a blonde you would expect. All right, now again, we're just going to move to the next node. We're gonna bring this up to 24 dB, hit play and scrub away until we find it. Frog's Dirty Blonde is uh, very similar to a blonde you would expect. It, it just, we use a little bit of honey malt and a little bit of nutmeg that just- There it is, it that's the spot. So now different. again, we're it just gonna, little we're gonna pull this out. Color to it, that's why we call it a dirty blonde. All right, now we're gonna move down to this final node down here. Again, we're gonna bring it up to 24. We're going to go ahead and start loop playing. Blonde's dirty blonde is, and then we're going uh, to, to find blonde, you that expect. bad it, it audio. Use a little bit of honey malt and a little bit of nutmeg that just makes it something different. It adds a little color to it. That's why we call it a dirty blonde because when people see it in the glass, they're like, this this is a blonde. I think you gave me the wrong beer. There it is. But that's just that honey malt. And there it, it and is. Our, now we're just gonna pull again, that out. Our, towards our, we don't care about style so much. Like we don't necessarily. All right, so now we've pulled out these frequencies. You can keep going with this. You can drop another channel EQ on if you want and kind of hunt for some more frequencies. I tend to just drop one on it unless it unless I'm finding a lot of really bad stuff. In most cases, this is gonna work for you. So the next thing that we're gonna do, or actually let's do this. Let's do a, a before and after here so we can kind of hear the difference. So let's start this looping. Frog's Dirty Blonde is and I'm gonna turn uh, on and off very this effect. similar to a blonde you would expect. It, it just, we use a little bit of honey malt and a little bit of nutmeg. That's before? That just makes it something different. It adds a little color to it. That's why we call it a dirty blonde. That's after? To me, it sounds just a little bit crisper, a little bit cleaner. Now let's uh, go to the next step, which we are going to do another EQ, another channel EQ. So we're gonna drop a second channel EQ on this. Right, and remember they stack downwards. Let's turn this first set, uh, group of, of settings off so we don't confuse ourselves and bring up this second channel EQ. And then again, we're gonna turn the analyzer on. And what we're gonna do here is we're gonna boost the mid high frequencies in um, in this gentleman's voice. And the reason that we're gonna do that is that in the English language, those higher frequencies, those consonant sounds, the k those kind of sounds are the ones that make it intelligible. Um, those are also frequencies that as you get older, um, start to go first, you start to lose those. So this will so do your older audience a favor and just kind of boost those frequencies a little bit. So again, let's turn the analyzer on and that'll allow us to see where those frequencies are in his voice. I'm gonna hit loop play. Blonde's Dirty Blonde is uh, very similar. So they're kind of right in here, right around the 2K area. So I'm gonna grab that and and I'm gonna boost it up. I'm trying to get to about three, three to 3.5 dB here. So let's actually move this to uh, 3.5. And then again, I'm going to do just turn this on and off so you can hear the difference. Frog's Dirty Blonde is uh, very similar to a blonde you would expect. It, it just, we use a little bit of honey malt and a little bit of nutmeg that just makes it something different. It adds a little color to it. That's why we call it a dirty blonde because when people see it in the glass, they're like, this, this is a blonde. So I don't, I'm, so I'm hoping you can hear that as well. But it, again, it makes it a little crisper, a little more intelligible. All right, so that's that's the end of the EQing that I'm gonna do on it. The next thing that we're gonna do is apply a compressor. So let's bring up the compressor and it's also down here in the audio uh, effects, but it's under levels. So we'll go to uh, compressor. You'll notice that I have a mics compressor here. That's actually one with all of the base settings that I'm gonna show you right now that I've saved out as, as just a, a base settings compressor. So let's take the compressor, we're gonna drop it onto the audio. So first off, what is a compressor? Oh, hold on, how, can, how do we wind up with two compressors here? Let me get rid of that. I must have double clicked down there. Um, so what is a compressor and what does it do? So this is the compressor settings window that we're, I'll go through this real quick, or at least I'll go through the things that we are going to use on it. The first thing that I do is I leave it on platinum digital and I change this to graph because I want to see a graph. It gives me more information. The next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to turn off this auto gain.
I don't want the auto gain on. I'm going to adjust the gain. I, I'm not never a fan of auto anything. Um, so what does a compressor actually do? A compressor is going to compress the audio. And what does that mean? That means that anything that's at a low gain level, because a compressor is only working on gain, it's only working on volume. So it's gonna take anything that's at a low gain level and it's going to bring it up. And anything that's at a high gain level or a high volume level, it's going to bring it down. So think of it as like, you know, compressing. It's compressing the top down and compressing the bottom up. So what does that allow you to do? It allows your audio to be at a more consistent volume level or gain level throughout. Make sense? Think of it kind of like, um, here's a visual for you. If you've ever watched a professional singer singing and when they hold the microphone, as they get louder, they move the microphone away from their mouth. And as they get as they get softer, they move the, the microphone closer to their mouth. Think of that movement on that microphone as what the compressor is doing. All right, so hopefully that puts a good visual in your head for you. So here's the the uh, the the eff not the effects the the um, parameters we're going to change. So first we're going to talk about threshold. What's threshold? The threshold says when the audio reaches this level, whatever this is set at. Currently it's at negative 20. When the audio, let me show you over here, gets to negative 20. I'm going to start applying the compressor. If it gets below 20, I'm not going to apply the compressor. So that's where it's going to be applied. We'll start leaving it at negative 20. The ratio is how much of this compressor is going to be applied. For dialogue, I usually put this around four to one. That's my starting point. I, honestly, I rarely have to move this. We'll come back to makeup audio. Let's move down to the knee. The knee is how quickly, how how softly or or hard, hardly is that why it's a word, I'm not using it the right way. It's how soft or hard the compressor is going to be applied. If you watch right here as I adjust this knee, it'll give you a visual representation. See how it's getting like really, really hard. It's gonna apply it really quickly. If you go this way, it softens it out. It's gonna apply it more as a curve. I leave it at one. Um, to have a nice soft uh, uh, implementation of, of the compressor. Attack, the attack and release, attack and release is how quickly the, if we go back to our analogy of a, a singer with a microphone, it's how quickly they move the mic into their mouth would be the attack. And the release is how quickly they move the mic away from their mouth. For dialogue, we want this to be fairly fast. In my base settings, and I very rarely adjust these, in my base settings, the attack, I leave it at zero. The release, I put around negative 13. All right, so now we are basically set up to, to apply this compressor. So what I'm going to be shooting for is to get my audio, his dialogue, peaking at around negative six. So what I need to do to, to make that happen is to adjust the makeup gain. Because remember I said it's gonna compress the, the louder volume down. Once we compress it down, we have to bring everything up. And that's what this, uh, that's what this gain does, this makeup gain. So again, I'm gonna highlight the clip. I'm going to hit the, uh, the forward slash or question mark key to get it loop playing. I'm going to start adjusting the makeup gain into until I get to negative six. Here we go. Frog's Dirty Blonde is uh, very similar to a blonde you would expect. It, it just, we use a little bit of honey malt and a little bit of nutmeg that just makes it something different. It adds a little color to it. Now, if you listen to this, you can hear that I'm starting to bring a little bit of that background noise, that noise floor into it. I can, I can get rid of some of that by adjusting the threshold. So I'm gonna bring the threshold up just a little bit um, and, and, and to kind of get rid of some of that noise floor. Frog's Dirty Blonde is uh, very similar to a blonde you would expect. It, it just, we use a little bit of honey malt. So I'm gonna go there about negative 15. And now if we look, I'm probably over the negative six over here. Frog's Dirty Blonde is... Uh, so now I've gotta bring the makeup gain down. And by bringing the makeup gain down, that will also help 
with the with the noise floor coming up because we don't have to gain as much. So let's bring this back down. Frog's Dirty Blonde is uh, very similar to a blonde you would expect. It, it and what I'm doing is I'm watching these meters here to get it down to get it up to negative six. Frog's Dirty Blonde is uh, very similar to a blonde you would expect. It, it just we use a little bit of honey malt. Right there. A little bit of my nutmeg. peaks are about yeah, negative six. Amazing. They go a little bit over, but they're averaging about negative six. So. Perfect, we're gonna leave it there. So that has sweetened this audio for him. And, and let me, I'll, I'll let you hear the difference here. So I'm gonna go ahead and play it and we'll, we'll go on and off of all of the effects. Frog's Dirty Blonde is uh, very similar to a blonde you would expect. It, it just, we use a little bit of honey malt and a little bit of nutmeg that just makes it something different. It adds a little color to it. You hear the the difference? It's going to be it's a huge difference, because um, because now and and the other advantage here is we don't have to go down here and start chasing with 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 gain with rubber bands to try and keep everything at a nice even level. This just does that for you. The compressor does that for you. All right, so here's the extra tip that I promised you, which is how do I put music under my dialogue and and still be able to keep the level of the music up without it competing with my dialogue? And here, I'm gonna show you how to do this. First, I'm gonna go ahead and close this, uh, this rolls that are expanded. I have a piece of music here. And uh, remember that we, we started out with our, our levels, we got our levels at about negative six. Well, if I know that negative six is where my my audio levels are, I, I'm gonna pull my music down to that level. So the first thing I'm gonna do is click on the music. I'm gonna go up here to the audio tab in the inspector. You know, if it's if your inspector is closed, you just click that to open it. And right here under volume, I'm gonna type in negative six. So that brings my volume debt level down across the board. And you'll notice I'm doing this in the media browser because that way now when I drop it into the, into the project, into the timeline, that will be applied. So let's take this music. We'll go back to the beginning. We're going to hit Q to put it into the timeline. And let's just play and listen to where the levels are at. Frog's Dirty Blonde is uh, very similar to... So obviously the music is way, way, way loud. So we got, want to bring the music down to where it doesn't compete. So I'm going to go ahead and put a, a, a keyframe here. And then I'm going to hit the option down arrow key, just start dropping that down. Let's drop it down to about negative 14. See what that sounds like. Frog's Dirty Blonde is uh, very similar to a blonde. Still kind of competing a little bit, so I'm going to play back and I'm going to use the arrow down or the option uh, down arrow to to adjust this music to where it kind of sounds right. Let's try again. Frog's Dirty Blonde is uh, very similar to a blonde you would expect. It, it just we use a little bit of honey malt and a little bit of nutmeg. That just so I don't know. That's negative twenty three, negative twenty four. That's probably a spot where where it's not completely. Little color to it. That's why we call it a dirty blonde because when people see it in the glass, they're like. But here's my problem. I can almost. I can barely hear the music now. I've had to pull it down so much that I can barely hear it. I don't like that. I want the music up a little bit, but if I bring it up, it competes with the voice. Well, this is how you can, um, you can have both, right? You can have both things. You can have your cake and eat it too. So let's go to the compressors, and or not, sorry, not the compressor, the EQ, and we're gonna grab our friend of the channel EQ, and we're gonna drop it on, and then let's open up its settings. Now, um, for a moment here, I'm going to mute it, and let's go back to our our audio here, our dialogue audio, and re and and let's once again show you where that audio is. So let's click on that. We'll go back to uh, actually, you know what? I don't, I don't want to confuse you. Let's not do that. Let's just throw uh, a channel EQ on here real quick. We'll pull it off in a second, but we're just going to use this to show you where his voice is. So click that, open it up. This is the channel EQ for, uh, for this gentleman's voice. And let's go ahead and turn the analyzer on so we can see where it is. Frog's Dirty Blonde is uh, very similar to a blonde. It, his voice is like between 
it starts at 100, but we'll say 200. That's where we're really starting to hear him is at the 200 area. And it goes all the way over to about the 5K area, right? More in the two, eh, five is going to be the top end of it. So with what that means is if we want to bring the music up and not compete with his voice, we have to pull these frequencies down out of the music, right? Makes sense. Pull them out of the music. We've got a little trough, a little channel for his voice to sit in. So let's go ahead and turn that off. Actually, I'll just pull this EQ off. I don't need it. So let's go back down to the music channel. And this is our EQ for the music channel, right? We opened it up here. So let's go in and grab these nodes and we're going to start pulling down to about 3 db remember everything started at about 200 on his voice so we're going to pull a little trough down here to about 3 db between three three and a half is where i'm going to put it so right now we have a nice little trough for his voice to lay into we've kind of carved these frequencies out a little bit right let me carve it down a little bit more. So we've carved out these frequencies for his voice to sit in. So if we go back in and play this, let me close this up. If we go back in and play this, I, I'll start bringing the music back up and to, where, to where we can still hear him, but we'll hear the music much better. So let's go ahead and play this. Frog's Dirty Blonde is uh, very similar to a blonde you would expect. It, it just, we use a little bit of honey malt and a little bit of nutmeg that just makes it something different. It adds a little color to it. That's why we call it a dirty blonde. So we got about 4 dB more out of the music and it's not competing with his voice anymore. Frog's Dirty Blonde is uh, very similar to a blonde you would expect. It, it just, we use a little bit of so there you go. We were able to keep the music up higher, get more of the emotional impact out of it, yet still hear our, uh, our, our hero's dialogue. So I hope you found that uh, informative and useful. Thanks for watching.